on everyone so Zach Zaclavine has returned from injury after missing 17 games of uh, the Chicago Bulls have played five games with him and in that time he is averaging just under 17 points per game at 16.8 but he's embraced the playmaking side playing more off ball more off ball movement uh, he's also rebounding the ball excellent with seven rebounds and six assists uh, he is playing really well in just this like off-ball action uh, as another secondary playmaker. He really has embraced that, which I find very interesting. Um, now, obviously, all of the rumors and speculation on Zach Levine going to the Lakers. Uh, the Lakers uh, you get conflicting reports like by the hour almost. It's like one minute. The, the Lakers are all in on Zach Levine. The next minute, they're reluctant because of his salary and all that stuff. Now, Many of you are aware that I'm Team Levine. I think the Lakers should go get Zach Levine, especially the way he's playing right now. Imagine if the Lakers could get a 17-7-6 and six guy right now that is elite off ball and can just go get 30 whenever you need him to, right? The Lakers are having an off game. It's like, oh, just give the ball to Zach Levine. Also, I think Zach Levine, his scoring numbers would be a lot higher, right? See, on Chicago, the Chicago Bulls have Kobe White, who has really just blossomed uh, as a scoring threat. They have DeMar DeRozan, right? They have a bunch of guys that can score the basketball in ISO situations, stuff like that. Where the Lakers, yes, they have Anthony Davis and LeBron James, but LeBron James as like the, the willing passer, the playmaker, Zach Levine playing and moving off ball, being 45% on catch and shoot threes. I just could see Zach Levine bumping that up to at least 20 a game. And then if he could still maintain that seven rebounds and six assists, he also hasn't taken a ton of shots, right? He had uh, a game the other day where he had like 14 points and he only took eight attempts. Um, so he's kind of been okay stepping back. But you would imagine if he's going to go to the Lakers, right, he's going to need to play the way he is currently with Chicago. He's not going to have the ball in his hands as much as he's accustomed to. He's going to have to play off ball a lot more. He's going to have to continue to make plays because the Lakers are probably going to trade a D'Angelo Russell or maybe an Austin Reeves or whatever, right? So you're going to need Zach Levine to kind of play exactly how he is playing currently for the Chicago Bulls. I just think it's something interesting. But we have an update per Brian Windhorst. Um, this is what he had to say about Chicago and Zach Levine. So he says... If they could trade Zach Levine in the next five minutes, they would trade him, and Zach would happily go to the airport, Winhorse said on NBA Today. I don't think anything has changed there. I think they absolutely want to trade him. So, again, Ryan Winhorse has talked about something that I've relayed in comments to people, because I see a lot of people that are like, well, Zach Levine's playing great. Like, why would Chicago want to trade him, right? Chicago's been winning a lot. Why would they want to trade him? Chicago doesn't want to trade Zach Levine strictly on his play. Chicago doesn't think Zach Levine is a bad player. They know he's a great player, but the relationship is done and they need to move off of him. He doesn't get along with the head coach, he doesn't get along with the front office and the organization, right? The bridges are burnt there. Uh, they went behind Zach Levine's back and lied to his face and ended up extending uh, the head coach, Billy Donovan. He wasn't happy about that. There were reports dating back to last season where there were that Zach Levine and DeMar DeRozan weren't seeing eye to eye and that they were having issues. It's just done. And the last thing you want is to build a toxic environment and, and that bleeding in and eventually stuff boiling over, right? Zach Levine right now is playing, you know, company man because the trade deadline's approaching. And, last, and he knows, I don't want to scare off other teams. I don't want to put myself in a position where teams go, oh, he's he's a he's a locker room issue, or oh, he's a problem. Let's avoid. Because I'm sure Zach Levine understands the situation here, right? He's been very open about wanting to play for the Lakers. Uh, he was even in an interview wearing an LA hat <laughs> when the trade rumors started. Uh, he in like the All Star game in like what was it, 2018 or whatever. He was talking about how you know he would love to play. With a team like LeBron James, that has LeBron James and Anthony Davis. Or I don't think it was 2018. I think it was like 2020 or whatever, 2019, whatever. One of those years. He basically said, I'd love to play with LeBron James and Anthony Davis. He has dropped hits along the way. The last thing he wants to do is ruin his image to where it scares teams away. But if you get post-trade deadline and he's still on the roster, well, at that point, it's like, now what? And that's what they're afraid of. They don't want to run the risk of there being just 
toxicity in the locker room, right? Chicago's trying to figure out what do they want to do, right? Their team is winning with or without. They were winning before Zach Levine came back. It wasn't like they were terrible. Zach Levine came back and all of a sudden they're four and one. No, they were very good even without Zach Levine. So the way that they're looking at it is let's trade Zach Levine. Let's get whatever pieces we get for Zach Levine. One, we move off of his big long-term contract. So that's going to give us more flexibility going forward. Two, what do we look like with these new pieces, with these new components? And then in the offseason, they'll make the adjustments accordingly. Or maybe by the trade deadline. They want to get a trade done sooner rather than later, right? But you look at a situation, which is real quick, is good for the Lakers, right? Because the Bulls want to get a Zach Levine trade done as soon as possible because they want time to see what do what else do they need to do, if anything, Right? If they wait till the trade deadline, well, now they're stuck and they're not going to be able to make any other moves because they don't know what that entails, right? So it's in Chicago's best interest to get a deal done ASAP. Now, does that mean the deal will be done tomorrow? I wouldn't hold my breath, but it could come sooner rather than later because Chicago wants to see, okay, do should we trade DeMar DeRozan? Should we trade other guys, right? How does this team fit? Should we take the guys that we got in the Laker trade and, and you know, resend them elsewhere? Like, they want to kind of get a feel of what does this team look like and what direction do we want to go next season? Chicago knows they're not winning anything this year, but it's about next year and beyond. They don't want to be a tanking team. They don't want to be a bad team. They want to be a good team, right? They want to kind of retool rather than rebuild. So they want to get the trade done ASAP. But... What I was going to say before that was you look at like DeJounte Murray, right? There's a lot of talks about DeJounte Murray. Atlanta isn't in a position to where they need to make a trade ASAP. Atlanta is going to go full rebuild mode and rebuild around Johnson and Yun, right? That's their plan. That's their goal. So they know we're going to be terrible this year. We might as well get the best pick possible. Well, I don't even think they own their pick this year, but point is like they're they know that they're not they they're probably not even going to make the play in this year. So the way they look at it is we can be patient, we can wait as long as possible for the best return. Now, that doesn't mean that if the Lakers are willing to give up Austin Reeves up, maybe they do say, "Okay, well let's get it done." That doesn't mean that they'll wait necessarily till the trade deadline, but they're not a team that is in a position to where it's like, "Okay, well we we want to see and retool." Around. No, like the Chicago Bulls situation is They believe that they can still be good this year. They don't necessarily think that they're going to win a championship, but they think that they can be good enough to compete, maybe surprise somebody in the playoffs, and then go add whatever pieces are needed in the offseason. But they're not going to be able to figure that out until they get the Zach Levine trade done. So there is an incentive for Chicago to get the Levine trade done sooner rather than later. However, the DeJounte Murray thing, that is something that is very likely going to take a while. Um... Again, you never really know, but I wanted to kind of clarify this. I kind of wanted to let people know as far as that goes, Uh, because, I mean, this is a good update, right? Chicago seems still determined to trade Zach Levine. Lakers need Zach Levine. You know, maybe the Lakers leverage, leverage, (laughs) words are hard, uh, leverage their way into landing both of these guys. That would be nice. Um, I, I do have concerns about just like, could all four of them, these two, as well as LeBron and AD, could they all fit? Um, but if they do, that'd be tough. And for the future, you'd be great. Imagine post-LeBron, you'd have DeJounte Murray, Zach Levine, and Anthony Davis. Woo, tough. Uh, with uh, Jared Vanderbilt. Man. Um, but anyway, I, I do. I, I really like um, and think. I still really heavily lean towards the Lakers are going to land Zach Levine. I really do. I think he's going to be the cheapest. He's going to be the most realistic. I don't think it's going to, you're going to have to sell the farm to get Zach Levine. Um, I mean, you're going to have to trade a bunch of players, but I've already broken down how Zach Levine impacts the Lakers more than those guys that they would have to give up. All of that. I just, I think Zach Levine will end up being a Laker. Again, I could be wrong. It's just a guess. I don't, I can't see the future, right? But it just makes sense that Zach Levine ultimately false to Lakers. But anyway, as always, this is a discussion, so I pass a question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? How do you feel? Um, do you agree? Do you think like, yeah, Zach Levine coming to Lakers, it's a matter of time, matter of when, not if. Uh, do you think, no, you know, go get DeJounte Murray, go get whatever. Again, however you feel, whatever your thoughts are, I would love to hear it. So let me know down in the comments below. 
That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me out a lot. Let's me to enjoy these types of videos, and I truly appreciate it. If you're not subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next one. Thank you.